All right, here's a uh, uh, hopefully a quick lesson about uh, coterminal angles. So coterminal angles uh, end at the same place. So terminal is where the, the terminal arm, that's where the angle ends. So uh, just a, as a quick review, here is your initial arm over here. And so in this case, the terminal arm is 70 degrees away. It's a positive uh, angle, it's plus 70. So therefore it's going in counterclockwise, it's going in this direction here. So coterminal co angles share the same terminal arm, such as 70 degrees and 430 degrees. So if I do 430 degrees, let's do that. So here I have done 70, now 90, 180, 270. Here I've done 360, I've done a whole lap, and now my 70 on top of that, there is 430 degrees. Okay, so 70 degrees and 430 degrees are not the same. 430 is, does an extra revolution and then the 70, but they are coterminal. So if you saw them saw it drawn, and if you just saw the initial arm and the, the terminal arm, you, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. But the difference is it does that extra revolution. If I go the other direction, if I go in the negative direction, so starting again from the positive x-axis, and now I'm going to go in the negative direction, and ends up being 360 minus 70 degrees or 70 minus 360 so that angle would be minus 290 degrees and you'll notice it is correct to say negative because we are going clockwise uh, anytime you want to find a coterminal angle uh, you add or subtract revolution, so where a revolution is an entire circle okay so a revolution is a whole circle a whole circle in degrees is 360 degrees. So we're either going to be adding or subtracting multiples of 360 degrees. Now in radians, a full circle is 2 pi. So 2 pi radians is equivalent to 360 degrees. So it, when we're talking radians, then we either add or subtract multiples of 2 pi. Here's a question. They say, they say find three coterminal angles for 40 degrees. So if we start with 40 degrees, well, why don't we start by adding 360, so the next one over, I'm going to make a list here. If I add 360 to that, then my next angle would be 400 degrees. And if I was to find another one, uh, positive, if I add another 360 to that, I guess that would work out to 760 degrees. I can also go negative, right? So if I, if I subtract 360, uh, 40 minus 360 would be minus 320 degrees. So here is my uh, here are my three answers for three that are coterminal with 40 degrees. Now, uh, in part B, you can tell this is in radians uh, because there's no units, right? This is the degree symbol, so when you see that, you know it's in degrees. When they don't leave any units at all, it's in radians. Often, but not always, it'll have pi involved, but I could say something like 1.4, and if there's no degrees, then I would know that's in radians. In this case, there is a pi, pi over 6. So I want to determine three coterminal angles for pi over 6. And like I said, the way I do it is add or subtract 2 pi. So I'll do the same idea. I'll write pi over 6 here. Now when I add... 2 pi to it. When I go like this and say, okay, I want to add 2 pi and figure out what the next one would be, uh, it's kind of hard to add 2 pi and pi over 6 because the denominators are the same. So if I take 2 pi and I convert that to 12 pi over 6, right, by multiplying the top and the bottom by 6, then I can say I'm going to add uh, 12 pi over 6. So this is the same thing as adding my 2 pi. It's the same thing as adding 360 degrees because in the in the unit circle here one complete revolution all the way around is equal to 2 pi. And so I'm adding one complete revolution. So instead of pi over 6 now I'll have 13 pi over 6. And if I do that again if I add another 12 pi over 6 then I would have 25 pi over 6. Same, same idea if I subtract 12 pi over 6, then 1 pi over 6 minus 12 pi over 6 will give me minus 11 pi over 6. So again, I have my three answers here. Uh, the pi over 6 was my original, and these are three coterminal angles. Now, I chose two, um, two ones where I added 
2 pi over 6 and 1 where I subtracted, but there really are an infinite number of answers that you could get. Um, you can just keep on adding 2 pi's to it. Now, in this question here, it says find a coterminal angle for 740 degrees. So again, I'll be adding or subtracting 360s from it, but it has to be in this interval between negative 360 and 0 degrees. So in other words, uh, right now I've got 700. It's, go it's going positive a bunch of times. I want to find an equivalent that would be a, a negative one. So I'm going to be subtracting multiples of 360. In fact, I can think of it right away is that what 360 and 360 is 720. So I'm if I, you know, subtract 360 and then subtract 360 again. Really, what I'm doing is I'm subtracting 720 and I'll get 20 degrees. Okay, uh, I guess the middle one over here, once I subtract 360 the first time, it would be 380 degrees. Okay, um, these are all coterminal, but I'm still not between negative 360 and zero, so I need to subtract another 360, and then I'll be at negative 340 degrees. Okay, so there I am at negative 340 degrees. Good, it fits in between negative 360 and zero. If I subtracted another negative 360, then I would get, what, negative 700 degrees, and that is too far negative, right? It's to the left of uh, 360, so this would be my only answer, okay? Negative 340. Um, for part D, determine all coterminal angles of 5 pi over 3 over the interval of negative 4 pi and positive 2 pi. All right, so the same strategy here. I'll write 5 pi over 3. And I'm going to be uh, either adding or subtracting to it, and I'll be paying attention to my interval. So um, uh, again, I should probably change my 2 pi and write this as something over 3. So I need to multiply that by 3. So this is the same thing as 6 pi over 3. So I'll be adding and subtracting 6 pi over 3. Uh, but it might be tough for me to tell once I get past uh, 2 pi and once I get further to the left of negative 4 pi because I'm talking in thirds right now. So I'm going to do the same thing here. 2 pi, well I guess I just figured that out over here. 2 pi is the same thing as 6 pi over 3. Okay, And, and the negative 4, so if I want to change negative 4 pi uh, into some number of thirds. Uh, I'm going to have to multiply the denominator by 3 and the numerator by 3. So in other words, this is negative 12 pi over 3. So rewriting my interval, it's negative 12 pi over 3 up to 6 pi over 3. And just a reminder that this is, this type of notation here is called interval notation and the uh, the square bracket means it includes negative 12 pi over 3 and it also includes uh, 6 pi over 3 right so if I was to do a number line here and say this is uh, 2 pi over here or written otherwise 6 pi over 3 same value and way over here is my negative 4 pi or negative 12 pi over 3 Right, same number, that it would be a, a solid circle. It would include that one and all the values in between. So that's that's just a quick little review on interval notation. But in the meantime, now I need to go and start with my 5 pi over 3 and add 6 pi over 3s to it. So if I, if I add 6 pi over 3 here, my next one would be 11 pi over 3. How am I doing? Oh, that's too big, isn't it? I can. I have to stop at 6 pi over 3, so that's not a good answer. So I'm going to stroke that out. Uh, I'm going to go subtract 6 pi over 3. So 5 pi over 3 minus 6 pi over 3 is minus pi over 3. And that looks good because I can go all the way down to minus 12. So I'll do another one. Uh, so minus pi over 3, subtract 6 pi over 3, will be, give me negative 7 pi over 3. Uh, if I subtract, I'm going to do an eraser here just to get rid of my, so my notation here, just to give myself some room. If I subtract another set of 6 pi over 3, so if I subtract another 6, I would get negative 13 pi over 3. And that is too far negative, right? Because this is what was left over, what I didn't erase. So again, this is too far. So determine all coterminal angles of 5 pi over 3. So the answer are these three right here. These are my three answers. 
Okay, uh, the other ones would be either too small or too large. Uh, the last part here is express a general form for all coterminal angles. So this isn't with a, within a range, uh, or I guess another way to say it is within uh, negative infinity and co and positive infinity, right? Or uh, you could say for all real numbers. So if you were to include the infinite series, so here's what you'd say. Um, we're starting with our 5 pi over 3. And just like in our previous question, what we're going to be doing is adding uh, 2 pi to it. Um, but any multiple of 2 pi, right? And the multiples of 2 pi need to be integers because we can add, you know, positive 1 or positive 2 2 pi's or negative 1 or negative 2 multiples of 2 pi, but not 1 and a half 2 pi's, right? So that has to be multiplied by an integer. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the letter k to represent all integers, and then we're going to just state that. I will say where k is an integer. Okay, where k is an integer. Another way of writing this last part, instead of using the English in there, you can say k uh, is an integer. And really there are two options here for integer. You can use the letter i, which seems to be very popular here in Manitoba. Uh, or And you're going to see that in a lot of the solutions. Or as we had earlier in our Pearson text, uh, the letter z. There, I'll try to make it look fancy there. The letter Z, which also means the set of integers. So this means the same thing. So uh, this last part, where K is an integer, you can you can write it out like this, or you can write K as a member of an integer set, or K as a member of the integer set. Uh, Z, just for those of you who are interested, comes from, uh, I guess, some, some German uh, mathematicians. It's a German word... Uh, Zahlen, I think is how you pronounce it, which I think really means number uh, more than integer but for some reason it's um, through historical uh, precedent it has come to mean the set of integers so here is uh, an answer there uh, or you can do the other v versions of it and here is your homework for this lesson and I hope you do well on it uh, thank you very much